Welcome students back to chapter four. Um, we're gonna keep moving through our chapter. So the first lecture focused on kind of an introduction to the cell. Uh, this lecture is going to look at the nucleus and ribosomes and also the endomembrane system. Um, so we're gonna start with the nucleus first. Um, if you kind of think of the like your brain as sort of the boss of your body, the nucleus is essentially sort of the boss of the cell. Um, it is where the cell's DNA um, will be found. Um, so the DNA is um, distributed throughout the, the cell's nucleus um, in a um, sort of a fibrous kind of almost kind of cotton candy-y sort of mass. Um, there is a envelope um, around the nucleus itself. Um, and then you'll also see some um, usually darker portions in the nucleus. Um, and it's called the nucleolus. Um, it's where some ribosomes are assembled. And you can see there are pores in that nuclear envelope uh, that helps our messenger RNA, which we make from DNA, um, get out of the nucleus so that it can get into kind of the cytosol of the cell so we can actually build stuff. Um, you can see there are ribosomes here. Uh, this is the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, so this happens to be rough ER since it has uh, these protein making ribosomes attached to them. Uh, the ribosomes themselves are composed of uh, some protein structures um, and then also something called ribosomal RNA um, and essentially what the ribosomes do is they help us make proteins. Uh, they, we take uh, messenger RNA that we make from uh, DNA, so we, make, we use the DNA to um, make this messenger RNA and then we use these ribosomes to make proteins. Um, cells that make a lot of proteins, for instance, if we're talking about maybe the proteins that make up most of our muscles, um, they're going to have a lot of ribosomes attached to them. Now some ribosomes are free, meaning kind of just studded throughout the cytosol, and then some of them are actually kind of bound onto the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, the free ribosomes tend to make proteins that the cell uses itself, whereas the ribosomes attached to the ER tend to make proteins that are going to get kind of exported out of the cell. Um, so that's the nucleus and the ribosomes. It's kind of genetic control of the cell. DNA into mRNA into a protein. That's how we um, kind of get our DNA functional and red and um, how we get that kind of genetic information um, out of the DNA and, and into actual use in the cell by building proteins. Um, kind of as part of that kind of uh, synthesis and distribution network, um, we have something called the endomembrane system. Um, it's a, it involves a whole chunk of different organelles inside the cell and they're all sort of connected to each other. Um, through um, the use of what we call a vesicle, which is essentially just a sac with made of phospholipids. Um, but the endomembrane system um, helps make different things for the cell. It helps distribute these things to other parts of the cell or to out of the cell. Um, it also stores different molecules um, and, as I mentioned, exports things. Um, so it, it's a whole kind of system and series of organelles um, that are very necessary for the functioning of the cell. Um, so we start, of course, with the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, it's essentially just a kind of series of tubes and sacs. Uh, you can see it here um, using um, this um, image from a transmission electron microscope. Um, there are two varieties of ER. Uh, there's smooth ER, which lacks ribosomes, um, so it's involved in most, mostly kind of processing and making lipids, um, and also maybe a little detox, um, kind of processing of toxins. And then the rough ER has the ribosomes attached to it, and so it is the part of the ER that is going to make um, our 
proteins that are going to be secretory, i.e. kind of exported out of the cell. So you can see here is uh, our ribosome. It's attached to the ER, and you can see it's building this protein. Um, and once we have our little kind of polypeptide chain, which kind of series of amino acids, then we fold it into a proper shape. We add some sugars, and then you can see part of the ER sort of pinches off, becomes a vesicle um, with the little protein inside the little transport vesicle. From there, um, those little transport vesicles from our ER go to a structure called the Golgi apparatus, which is essentially a series of kind of sacs, um, again, membranous. Um, and I like to think of the Golgi as sort of a warehouse, right? There's a receiving side and a shipping side. So the receiving side of the Golgi gets the vesicle from the ER with the protein in it. Um, the vesicle is then kind of transported throughout the Golgi. It gets processed a little bit more. It gets packaged properly. And then another vesicle kind of pinches off the Golgi apparatus um, so that the protein is kind of shipped to the surface of the cell so that the cell can export it out of the cell. In addition to, um, so, that, so the, the Golgi and the ER are sort of involved in the, the distribution and synthesis of stuff. But one of the ways that we get rid of stuff, um, either uh, maybe damaged organelles or maybe a bacteria or virus that are um, maybe immune cell eight, are the lysosomes. Um, and so they um, have these kind of acidic en enzymes that uh, essentially kind of break down um, Again, maybe a bacterium or a virus or some sort of cellular debris or damaged organelle. So you can see that kind of happening here. So here is our lysosome. Here is um, a little bit of uh, kind of cellular stuff. Um, it pinches off into this little vacuole. The vacuole then merges with the lysosome and the digestive enzymes in the lysosome basically break down that little bit of stuff. You can see also maybe you have a damaged organelle. Um, again, the, the organelle will be kind of contained in a vesicle. That vesicle will merge with the lysosome and the enzymes in the lysosome essentially sort of break down the damaged organelle. Um, so if we go back here, you can see the lysosomes are essentially sort of like a recycling center because uh, they're kind of the, the pickup, you know, the cleanup crew for our cells. Um, you'll also find uh, vacuoles uh, inside uh, some cells. Uh, so a lot of protists have little contractile vacuoles, um, which sort of expel water out of them, allows uh, protists to move. Um, and then plant cells tend to have uh, very large kind of central vacuoles um, that acts sort of like a storage area, um, but also helps um, with the growth and development of the plant cell. Um, vacuoles come in kind of several different varieties, um, but the, the contractile vacuoles and the central vacuoles are sort of the most common of the bunch. Um, another kind of pickup cleanup crew for our cell is peroxisomes. Now, um, unlike the lysosomes and the Golgi and the ER, peroxisomes actually um, don't originate uh, from the endomembrane system. Um, so they're slightly different structurally. Um, and they are sort of a cleanup crew like the lysosomes, but they have more peroxide-like enzymes, hence the peroxisome, um, and, and not, not quite so acidic ones. So they, again, sort of help break down damaged cells, cellular debris, so on and so forth. So you can see here is... Um, sort of a, a kind, of, kind of summary you can see here is our nucleus here is our uh, so we're going to take the information from the dna inside the nucleus we're going to convert it into mrna the mrna will leave through the little pore go into say the rough er 
that will help us build a protein. These little transport vesicles will pinch off the ER, come over to the Golgi, infuse with the Golgi. The little protein will be modified and packaged, and then we'll get another little transport vesicle um, to kind of ship out, and so there goes our protein. And if we have some damaged proteins or damaged organelles or just even a little bit of cellular kind of stuff and debris, we can put them into a vesicle, uh, merge it with a lysosome or a peroxisome, um, and get rid of the kind of damaged organelle or debris or bacteria or virus that way.